Okay, the last part is energy um, calculation. So this is the last section of chapter 7 and that's determining the amounts of energy either um, absorbed or um, emitted in chemical reactions, all right? So whether it's energy loss, it's energy given out or it's energy absorbed, um, we are looking at um, these kind of reactions. So endothermic reactions are where energy is getting absorbed. Exo is when energy is being um, released. So the unit for energy is the joule, all right? That's the metric unit. And the SI is, um, I'm sorry, the SI unit is the joule. And a bigger unit is the kilojoule, all right? So kilojoule is a thousand joules. And we've already looked at it um, before when we looked at energy in chapter three. All right, so how is this energy in a reaction calculated? Delta H, the change in heat energy, H means heat energy, heat of a reaction, is the heat of the products, the energy of the products minus the heat of the reactant. So that's delta H. That's what we are calculating. All right. So what is this heat of reaction? That's the amount of heat absorbed or released during a reaction. All right. So this happens, the pressure is not changing, it's constant atmospheric pressure. And what is happening is the reactants are, are colliding, interacting, bonds are breaking, and then bonds are reforming when products are formed, all right? So you know that in a reaction, atoms are getting rearranged. So the original bonds are breaking and new bonds are forming when those atoms get rearranged. So in the process, there might be energy that is absorbed, if, like in the form of heat, by um, by burning to break up those bonds, and then the bonds reform to form products. Now, when those bonds reform, they can keep all the energy absorbed, all right, and they don't release anything. Or sometimes, when those bonds are reformed and the new products are formed, a lot of energy is released, all right. So, if energy is released, it becomes exothermic where the products have less energy than the original reactants right then the sign of delta h is going to be negative if on the other hand the products have more energy than the reactants then of course delta h would be positive and that would be considered endothermic so h is also referred to as enthalpy that's another word for the energy of reactions the heat of reactions is called as enthalpy. Okay. So in an exothermic reaction, as you can see, when those bonds reform, it's stabilizing. All right. All of that extra energy that had been initially um, taken up to break bonds is released now because the products uh, are stabilized. So they have less energy than when they started out. All right. So that energy release that's the delta h the heat of the reaction okay so that delta h is negative because the heat of the products is less than the, that of the reactants okay so um when you write out the reaction you you will write the balanced equation and because it's released because it's one of the products it's included on the product side all right and the unit is in kilojoules. That's the unit, all right? A thousand times that of a joule. So um, when you look at it graphically, you plot energy versus how this reaction is progressing. You see the reactants are higher in energy where the products are less in energy, all right? So that's why energy of that 185 kilojoules is released when hydrogen and chlorine form hydrogen chloride gas. So this indicates an exothermic reaction. However, in an endothermic reaction, when heat is supplied to break bonds and reform them, um, break the bonds between the nitrogen molecules and oxygen molecules, and then they reform, 
um, that e energy that is absorbed is kept within the molecule. That means all of that energy is absorbed, nothing is released. Therefore, the product energy is higher than that of the reactants. All right. So that's a positive. So here it is included in the reactant. All right. It's added energy as one of the reactants. Okay. So this is an endothermic reaction. All right, so how do you calculate these heat changes, okay? So it says in the decomposition of water, um, this is endothermic. You see, it requires 572 kilojoules to become hydrogen and oxygen, all right? So um, you can use this just like you do mole-mole factors, all right? So two moles of water, require 572 kilojoules <clears throat> um, and uh, again two moles of hydrogen formation requires the 572 kilojoules and one mole of oxygen formation requires 572 kilojoules so these are some of the conversion factors and heat is a reactant so you can use it just like any other reactant okay so again um, what's given, what is needed, what is the plan to fi find out what the heat of the reaction is. If there's any mass conversions, you have to convert it into moles and the corresponding masses for products and then uh, write out the conversion factor, especially using the heat of reaction and then set up the problem to calculate what that heat of reaction is. So here it says there's 50 grams of ammonia being formed when nitrogen and hydrogen react how much kilojoules is released so they've given you the balanced equation of nitrogen and hydrogen forming ammonia this is exothermic the negative sign showing it's exothermic so heat is released all right so delta h is negative 92.2 kilojoules okay so heat released all right so what you need to do is write the mole factors um, 92.2 per 2 moles of ammonia 92.2 per 3 moles of hydrogen and 92.2 per mole of nitrogen so those are some of the um, the mole factors okay convert the 50 grams of ammonia into moles of ammonia okay and you know that 92.2 kilojoules is released for two moles of ammonia okay grams of ammonia divide by its molar mass convert it into moles of ammonia moles of ammonia times the heat of reaction will give you the kilo joules of ammonia and also don't forget you have to divide that when you're multiplying also make sure you divide by two All right, so these are some of the mole factors. So 50 grams of ammonia divided by the molar mass, you get moles of ammonia. And moles of ammonia times the 92.2 divided by 2 because this is for every 2 moles of ammonia. So the final heat is negative 135 kilojoules. That's the amount of heat released when 50 grams of ammonia form all right some chemistry links cold packs and hot packs so in the cold pack it's ammonium nitrate so there are a couple of compartments it sep separates out the solid ammonium nitrate from the water so when you squeeze this the compartments are breaking and the ammonium nitrate is mixing into the water and when this happens heat is being absorbed from that water all right it's an endothermic reaction so heat is uh, being absorbed um, and so what happens is it dissolves into the water um, absorbing heat which is why it gets cold to the touch all right endothermic reactions are absorbing heat so they become cold to the touch Okay, um, in a hot pack, on the other hand, when the same thing happens, calcium chloride is separated from water, 
but when it mixes into the water heat is released that means it's coming out all right so because it's coming out much like your propane grill when it's heated a lot of heat comes out when you uh, fire up your grill a lot of heat comes out that's an exothermic reaction right all right so um these are some study checks um that i want you to work on you have sodium and chlorine giving you two sodium chlorides um, given is 53.2 grams of sodium 65.8 grams of chlorine find the limiting reactant and the theoretical yield the actual yield is given find the percent yield and the next you have copper one oxide combining with carbon to give you two copper and carbon monoxide so you're given 11.5 grams of the copper one oxide and 114.5 grams of carbon again find limiting and theoretical yield and the actual yield and the percent yield all right some study checks mercury to oxide decomposes to mercury and oxygen so um this is the reaction the sign of the heat is positive 182 so positive means it's endothermic how many kilojoules are needed to react with 25 grams of mercury to oxide okay um and the next one how much heat in kilojoules is released when nitrogen and hydrogen react to form 150 grams of ammonia so we did a similar problem with 50 grams of ammonia so you'll follow the same exact same steps um, same thing here convert grams to moles and then you know that for two moles of mercury um, to oxide you have 182 kilojoules all right and here for two moles of ammonia it's negative 92.2 kilojoules and that is the end of um, this um, section and what I will do in the next video is answer those study check problems and also provide you with um, the homework for this chapter I'll stop here